So greetings, everyone. Uh, this is the last of our discussions about uh, the search for a nonviolent future. It's not that the last chapter in the action plan don't merit, merit, in my view, some analysis and some thinking about, but I think we've done enough now so that uh, you should be more than ready uh, and able to go into it on your own if you want to. Uh, I did want to mention that the psychologist that I was talking about last time was none other than Philip Zimbardo, who is probably the most cited uh, psychologist in American psychology today, and that he went on to do an opposite project called the Hero, uh, what's it called, the Hero? Uh, heroic Imagination Project. The, the Heroic Imagination Project the acronym of which, I hope you note, is HIP. It's a very HIP project. But then uh, in chapter 9, uh, it's kind of more of a lyrical chapter uh, about Mother Earth, uh, which I have not been talking, did not have a chance to talk about very much uh, heretofore. And I started off by quoting one of my favorite lines from the poet Homer, whose work I spent decades uh, learning and teaching about when I was a professor at Berkeley. It's a line that occurs when the hero uh, Achilles has killed in battle uh, his nemesis, his arch enemy, Hector. Hector is his arch enemy because he in turn has killed Achilles' partner Patroclus. And so the horrible logic of war is playing itself out. But in the um, Conceptual, the conceptualization of the time. If you killed somebody in combat, it was not an offense against the natural order. But you had to obey certain rules. You had to obey certain restraints. And that is once your opponent uh, lay dead, you had to respect the body. If you didn't do that, you were desecrating humanity as a whole. So then you get this uh, famous line which is uttered by the gods when they look down and see that Achilles has not relinquished the body for proper burial. He's in fact desecrating it, he's dragging it around the city of Troy at the back of his chariot. And incidentally there was a horrendous picture that came out, a photograph during the Vietnam War of this being done to a person at the back of an American tank. But the line, I just wanted to quote it to you in Greek and say a little bit about it. Kufain garde gaion a kidze men ainon. Very beautiful poetry. Kufain garde gaion a kidze men ainon. A kidze means he is uh, torturing or desecrating or dishonoring. And what he's dishonoring is Kufain gaion, the mute earth who cannot speak for herself, and men I know means in his fury. In his battle rage, he has gone beyond the acceptable norm, and he is desecrating the earth itself. And I treat that, and I think we can all use that as an image, uh, especially for, if you will, the environmental degradation that happens during the preparations and the practices of warfare in our time. And uh, I would point out now that there is an alternative interpretation of this line that Kufain Gaion, I don't think this is correct, incidentally, but it's an interesting point, that it might refer to Hector's body, this mute earth, this inert physical thing. Whether it does or not, I think what we need to do now is absorb that feeling of horror, of desecration, when we commit this kind of violence and forget the idea that we can create rules that make it uh, an acceptable and a healthy thing to do. Well, okay, friends, I have very much enjoyed these rather one-sided conversations with you. I have gotten some feedback and I hope that you now feel in a better position to make use of uh, search for a nonviolent future. Thank you very much for your attending to some of these discussions and please continue to be in touch with us at Meta Center. Thank you.